Hi gamers, and welcome to another recent collecting video where I show what games I've bought recently. Now this one is, uh, is the first of its kind, uh, uh, where I try, try a bit of a, a new thing, uh, simply because uh, I've been buying somewhat less video games these days. And uh, as a new uh, component to this video, I'm going to be showing what Magic the Gathering cards and products I've bought recently. So if Magic the Gathering is your thing, uh, it's okay, you can just uh, turn the video off at, uh, uh, at the end of the video game section. Uh, the Magic the Gathering stuff is going to be at the end of the video. But if Magic is your thing, uh, I hope you enjoy uh, with me uh, showing my, my newest uh, cards and uh, me rambling about Magic the Gathering in general. Well, before we get to the uh, video games, uh, I have a new donation. Those aren't that common these days, so I really, really appreciate this. Uh, and uh, uh, as uh, luck would have it, this is a, a trading card, collectible card game um, uh, themed thing. But it's, mag it's not Magic of the Gathering, but it's uh, sorcery. Now, there are all kinds of uh, different uh, uh, collectible card games these days, and Sorcery is among the newest ones. And uh, Sean from the USA sent me this insane package. Uh, he said that he's been enjoying uh, both of my channels, both this one and my Fin Gamer ASMR channel. Check it out if you don't know what that is. Uh, but yeah, Sean has, has been a fan of my, my both channels for years and uh, he knows I'm a fan of Magic the Gathering uh, and uh, uh, he has been very much into the premise of, of sorcery, which is that they uh, like they do uh, only hand painted uh, uh, like pictures, no, none of this digital stuff and uh, the print runs are, are supposed to be like in check and uh, the, this is uh, like the alpha printing of, uh, of this, uh, this set of the Contested Realm and uh, like, uh, like stuff that uh, matters to collectors and uh, the overall collectible value of a game, something that's uh, kind of been uh, slipping with Magic the Gathering. So Sean th thought that I would enjoy sorcery. Uh, and uh, yeah, this package is just, just crazy. Uh, he sent me the uh, uh, pre-constructed decks, uh, the four elements. Uh, and uh, uh, there are all kinds of, uh, this is the Alpha Kickstarter uh, uh, playmat and an Alpha Booster box topper here and uh, a pledge pack again from Kickstarter and uh, also sent me uh, three boxes of uh, sleeves and uh, yeah, this is a crazy package. Like if you don't know, this is, this is valued at like $500 uh, at the moment which is crazy, like, Sean, <laughs> I, I know I thanked you in the ASMR video that I did, but I gotta thank you again. Uh, this is excellent stuff, uh, I'm gonna give, give this a nice home, and uh, yeah, I'm uh, like I said there, I'm not gonna be opening this up, a sorcery isn't something that, uh, like, uh, uh, at least not yet, uh, like tempts me as, as as a playable game because magic uh, magic still has <laughs> too much of uh, of the allure there and I don't think I have the time and money to expand into another game. Uh, but yeah, these being the alpha printings and all, I wouldn't open these up even in the case that I would uh, get into sorcery at a later date. So even then, I would like keep these as, as collectibles and sealed and. Uh, uh, I, I I love like charting uh, the values of uh, of cards and uh, sealed product and stuff like that. So this is uh, uh, an excellent gift, and I really appreciate it, Sean. Thank you. So let's get these out of the way and uh, get into the video game section, which, like I said, is uh, is a bit smaller in this uh, uh, this video. 
but uh, still we got some switch bangers here. Uh, which order should I do these? Yeah, first up we have Pikmin uh, 1 plus 2. So now you can uh, uh, play uh, all four of the Pikmin games on the Switch and uh, it's uh, nice to have the uh, physical version of 1 plus 2 as, as well. Of course I, I played this through to, uh, from on the GameCube. It's my maybe my favorite new Nintendo IP of uh, like the 21st century. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I really love Pikmin, played it on, on the GameCube, play, played both of these through on the Wii. Uh, so yeah, I'm not going to be uh, playing them on the, on the Switch, uh, uh, but, but still I, I really love, love the fact that I, I can add this uh, to the Switch uh, library. And another uh, game that's... Uh, uh, well, I mentioned GameCube. Uh, I, uh, WarioWare uh, Inc., uh, the uh, uh, multiplayer version of the first game in the series that started on the Game Boy Advance. Uh, it's, it's my all-time most beloved uh, multiplayer game. Like, whenever I, I have enough friends over, we always play uh, WarioWare Inc. on the GameCube. Uh, ever since uh, that, uh, like they've they've done a WarioWare. Here's WarioWare Move It on the Switch. Uh, they've done a WarioWare game, uh, like pretty one, uh, pretty much like one game per uh, like Nintendo console, whether it is a home console or or a, uh, a handheld console. And they, yeah, they they still haven't captured the magic of the first game. That's that's for sure. And actually, this is the second WarioWare game on the Switch. Uh, but hey, like Switch is uh, like Nintendo's uh, one of the Nintendo's biggest successes. So I don't I don't blame them for like maybe making like and like two games <laughs> uh, on the Switch instead of just one. But it's it's still crazy to think like Nintendo has only done one Mario Kart, like and it sold like, like every uh, like fifty percent of Switch owners own the Mario Kart Eight Deluxe, and they they're not doing Mario Kart Nine. It would like be guaranteed being that like be the best selling thing ever, and Nintendo still won't do it. But hey, <laughs> we got a second WarioWare. Uh, like to me. Yeah, like uh, the mini, well, the micro games, uh, they're always uh, like uh, entertaining, amusing. I love the uh, zany comedy of, of WarioWare, but uh, to me, like the longevity or like uh, uh, how, how the game lives or dies is in the multiplayer. And uh, yeah, there are some, some, some good stuff uh, here, but yeah, it's still, I... I I, I still see no reason to like not play the GameCube version. It's just awesome. <laughs> but still, uh, I, I love a good WarioWare every now and then. Uh, then we have Super Mario RPG. Uh, of course, the uh, remake of uh, the Super Nintendo original. I love how they like recreated the uncanny valley <laughs> stare of Mario and Co. for the uh, uh, cover here. And then we have Detective Pikachu Returns, a sequel to the 3DS. Yeah, 3DS original. <laughs> and finally, we have here, well, one of the biggest games of the year Super Mario Bros. Wonder. Uh, yeah, Mario is like divided into two series, the 3D games and the 2D games. And uh, they're wildly different, like even though both have Mario in them, uh, they're like totally different genre, totally different gameplay, everything's different. Just the theme is the same. So like, uh, yeah, I really hope that Nintendo never stops making uh, one of those categories uh, and uh, this time it was a uh, time for the 2d uh, installment and uh, yeah this is this is great fun this is like maybe the most colorful most chaotic most surprising uh, Mario game there has ever been like there's so much creativity in it and uh, yeah just just brings a smile to your face 
Uh, I haven't finished this yet. I think I'm. I just finished World Five, one hundred percent. So I'm. I'm getting there. But yeah, I'm. I'm doing each world a hundred percent before I move on to the next one, which isn't like. It's it's not difficult. Uh, the game is pretty easy, even without like you using the uh, uh, the characters that uh, that don't uh, like can't get can get hurt, which is a nice nice uh, addition. Like if if you have a, a very young player too with you, uh, you can just give them uh, uh, give them a, a Yoshi or a Nabbit, so uh, they can just just keep uh, keep a. Uh, Jumping and, and walking, uh, and they don't get hurt with uh, with the enemies. Just easier for them. But uh, yeah, but the two-player game or multiplayer game is it's a bit different, uh, difficult because of how the uh, screen is tied to one of the characters. So it's actually it's a lot <laughs> more difficult to play with multiplayer than it is with uh, with a single player. That's for sure. Um, like with the um, like, uh, the uh, uh, formula of uh, formula of Mario games seems to be that uh, the uh, levels are super easy to uh, uh, complete, but uh, demand uh, a bit more effort and uh, skill to beat one hundred percent. And they have hidden uh, a nice uh, nice small number of uh, different collectibles uh, which you have to find. And uh, usually, I, I uh, like I, so far I've got those in like two passes. Uh, first, uh, I, I might get a uh, hundred percent of a level on the first try, but uh, at the latest on the on the second try. Sometimes there's something uh, a bit more uh, difficult that like I, I jump into the same pit uh, for like ten times in a row, but that's that's pretty rare. I haven't yet uh, because I'm going in in uh, like order of, of the worlds. I haven't uh, played any of the special world levels uh, except uh, the first one, and uh, it was uh, crazy difficult. Uh, uh, so yeah, re really looking forward to uh, cranking up the uh, difficulty level uh, with those. So definitely easy to uh, uh, like uh, go through uh, like the. Just the main campaign <laughs> of the of the game. Uh, it's it's uh, like anybody can do it. Uh, but if if you want to collect everything, including the special worlds, then things get really really uh, difficult. And uh, that's uh, just the perfect balance that I like in my in my Mario games. Uh, yeah, uh, of course. Highly recommended. I don't think there is a Mario game that I wouldn't recommend. Uh, just, uh, just, uh, just great fun. And uh, uh, again, a really uh, a nice uh, example of like the uh, uh, design philosophy of of Nintendo and uh, how they make the games inclusive to everybody but uh like you can still keep playing it and uh, getting satisfaction uh even after you finish the game and uh yeah those nice collectibles nice uh, little easter eggs here and there and uh yeah just looks looks great sounds great uh i really love super mario brothers wonder uh, that was it for the video game section. Then let's jump right into uh, my Magic the Gathering stuff. Uh, this is kind of like I like. Where do I begin with this? Uh, so I, I like uh, no lying. Uh, ever since I got the idea of uh, okay, so I'm going to be showing my Magic the Gathering cards from that point onwards. I've like uh, made a mental note of the cards that I want to show in this video because they are uh, like per se uh, the uh, cards that I've bought recently after I, I thought about it, uh, of, of including these. Uh, but yeah, I kind of still feel like if people don't know where my Magic the Gathering collection uh, like is at the moment, they, they might have a difficult time to like put these uh, new purchases into perspective. So please check out my uh, video on my uh, Magic the Gathering Commander decks. Uh, I have uh, 18 of those 
and I made a video of those uh, and uh, some some extra extra cards that I uh, owned. So that should give you like a rough idea of, of where I, where I am. Like I got uh, 40, uh, for example, I got 40 of each of the, uh, oh, sorry, 40 uh, uh, original dual lands total. So four of each of the dual lands, a play set of each. And uh, uh, all kinds of, uh, I love collecting reserve list cards. And, uh, but of course, I, I do have a sizable uh, collection of modern cards as well. You can't really do like competitive commander decks without modern cards. So here we are, even though it's, uh, yeah, you can get really burned financially buying like modern cards. So I won't be like showing any of the modern cards I, I bought because I just don't think that those are uh, worth mentioning. So I just have my... Uh, my old cards, uh, my reserve list cards, or, or cards that are rare uh, and or valuable uh, in some other way. So, uh, first up we got some reserve list cards. Uh, I got uh, City of Traders. I, I love the card, I love the design, I like how like you get thinking, hmm, where can I best use this? And uh, yeah, you really can't use this in a regular deck. You really need to build around it. Uh, and uh, ever since I built my Gitrock monster deck, uh, I just knew that, okay, City of Traders going into Gitrock. So I finally got this. I love the, uh, love the art, uh, love the flavor text, love the, uh, uh, like the effect. City of Traders is a, it's a beautiful magic card and I'm happy to own one. And I also got a Serendip Gin. I recently made a John Irenicus deck that uh, uh, like donates your creatures to other players and then the creatures are goaded. So I got all, all kinds of nasty things to, <laughs> to gift, like a Serendip Gin that makes you sacrifice your, your lands, but it's like a 5-6 flyer and uh, uh, yeah, perfect for John Irenicus. So yeah, I like I don't have uh, I don't have a Jusum Jin uh, like yeah for four mana five five it just doesn't cut it in these days. Uh, of course, Jusum de deals one damage to you, so like that could go into a John Ironicus deck as well. But yeah, Seren Deep Jin is uh, is uh, head and shoulders better than Jusum in in this deck. Uh, I like to uh, pick up uh, reserved list cards every time I think of a use for them. Like, I rarely, like, collect uh, the cards just for collecting sake. Sometimes I do, uh, but these days, whenever I buy, buy a reserve list card, it's almost always to add it to a, an existing deck. And this was a prime example of that, so happy to have a Serendip Jin. Well, these aren't uh, reserve list cards, but still uh, old. I got a strip mine uh, from Antiquities. I got two of these now. I, I got a strip mine in all of my decks. Uh, it's just a staple. It's like one strip mine per deck, uh, no exceptions. <laughs> and uh, uh, most of them are, are from the fourth edition. But yeah, whenever I see a, a nice deal on an original Antiquities strip mine, I, I pick it up. As is the case for Force of Will, this is why. All blue decks have a Force of Will, no exceptions, and uh, all of the Force of Wills are the Alliance's original. Like, any card that's, that is not on the reserved list uh, is uh, at a risk of, of uh, being like printed uh, to oblivion and uh, losing all of its value. But when you, like, Force of Will is no different, like, the uh, wizards could, like, put it into every commander product from this uh, here on out, and uh, it would lose all of its value. But still, the original printing with the original art, of course, by Terrence Nielsen, who no longer is allowed to do art, uh, this will always hold value. So, like, this is, like, I don't know, 10 euros more expensive than, like, uh, uh, a printing from like a recent masters uh, set. 
so it's a, it's a really a no-brainer always get the original of force of will like it's it's not like it's it's uh, twice the price or something like that it's it's very close to the like the same price as, as the modern printing and uh, this will hold value so much better then I got a couple of uh, Kaladesh uh, inventions, masterpieces. I got Mox Opal and Crucible of Worlds. Uh, I have, uh, I, I think, like 15 uh, different uh, Kaladesh masterpieces. Like, I have all the printed uh, Sword Off cards. I have a Sol Ring, uh, which is like one of my um, favorite Magic the Gathering cards ever made like visually um uh stuff like that uh but i when when they earlier this year when they announced that uh, they're gonna be like selling one uh card uh with uh, with this kind of uh border treatment in a secret layer and also they printed one other card was it raga one in 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 like uh a uh, special uh, slot in in a, in a booster with this uh, uh, border, yeah, that that kind of spooked me out. I'm like, w why can't wizards like keep anything sacred? Like these are cool cards; they're absolutely rare, and uh, like keep it that way. Like you don't have to reprint everything. Well, so far they just did two, and. Uh, uh, even though I, I saw a slight dip in the value of, of uh, inventions, uh, yeah, they're, they're back at the regular level they have been and some have even like been raising in value. These are rare, like uh, less than 10,000 of each uh, exists, so that's, that's really rare. And uh, they're gorgeous, they're for, for cards that like have high usability. And uh, again, these are uh, I, uh, all of my inventions are in decks that I use. Uh, so no, none of the, those I have bought like just for collecting sake. But yeah, of course, I, I am a bit uh, like anxious uh, about the fact that they could basically reprint everything. But I don't know. I don't think so. I, I, I maybe I'm doing a mistake, but I'm giving wizards the benefit of doubt here that they like they if they do reprint stuff with the same uh like border as these ones they won't reprint the same cards that they have been a masterpiece they're, they're going to be making new cards like rubber one uh and <laughs> even if they did uh maybe the foiling is different these are gorgeous foilings uh and uh yeah just like you can still differentiate the originals and the originals are still rare and the originals will still have value. So that's how I approach the Kaladesh inventions. And uh, yeah, uh, but I, I like, I don't like, there's maybe a couple of more that I would still like buy, maybe a, a Mana Crypt, Mana Vault, a Lotus Petal, expensive ones like that but i i've gotten like all the swords like 100 euros so these are, are decently priced uh so i've got all of those already and uh these these ones as as as, as well so uh yeah i love the cards and yeah i i still feel that these have uh, a future uh a financial future uh that like looks bright <laughs> Uh, switching gears a bit, I got one uh, sealed product here. I'm not a big uh, sealed product collector, but I do have a, a small collection of them. Like I have a couple of uh, couple of boxes of Amonkhet, a couple of boxes of uh, of uh, Kaladesh, a uh, couple of boxes of uh, uh, Our Devast Devastation, a couple of uh, War of the Spark uh one dominaria the original dominaria so like a bit older stuff and uh yeah uh, uh boxes that also include uh the masterpieces so th that's uh when a box has something uh like a chase card inside then it's uh like the expected value is 
Well, these are so rare that they hardly move like the expected value of a box. But uh, like in, in terms of people's minds, it's still possible that you have a masterpiece in the box. So that's that's why I, I think that like Amonkhet and Kaladesh will perform better than their uh, like similarly aged boxes that don't have um, like uh, a chase card inside them. Uh, here is Zendikar Rising, <laughs> long story short. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't really look at, uh, I'm not looking to expand my uh, sealed uh, magic product, but whenever I see a good deal, I, I buy it. Uh, this was at a, in a local store, this was 81, uh, well, 80, 82 euros, I think. So yeah, that's, that's, that's a pretty good deal. Uh, this does have a box topper. Uh, an expedition land, so that that has like built-in a value here, but yeah, for a 81 euros, uh, you can't really go wrong, especially now that uh, the play boosters are coming and the draft boosters and set boosters are going away. Uh, so yeah, just uh, a nice, inexpensive draft booster uh, might be like it could raise its value beyond what's like inside it because like uh, the play boosters, play booster boxes are gonna be more expensive than set boosters and a lot more expensive than like regular draft boosters. So it could be that like draft boosters get like this uh, uh, appreciation uh, uh, like uh, at the same time they release the play boosters, if you catch my drift, like uh, like the rising tide uh, raises all, all ships kind of mentality. But we'll see. Uh, this was cheap. I got it. <laughs> and finally, uh, I got a whole bunch of old school foils. Uh, ever since I bought, uh, like opened my first foil in Urza's Ors Legacy, I've like been... Uh, <laughs> I, I've been in love with them. Uh, they look fantastic. Like the foiling is is just so special, and uh, yeah, they they started doing uh, the old school foils in in a very similar fashion these days. Uh, but uh, yeah, and like to uh, maybe an expert could tell you that this is a modern old school foil, and uh, it's 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 not a match for the original old school foils but yeah they do look quite similar but uh yeah i i, I just value the rarity and the like of the originals so uh i i got a whole bunch of these uh uh let's let's see what i what i got got a whole bunch of these uh just to uh like uh i <laughs> Just to add to my decks, some some bling, uh, Bloodfire Colossus. I've I've won many many games with this, Zombify for my reanimator stitch together. Like look at this foiling, I I love it. Uh, Buried alive. Uh, then I got uh, for my Simic deck. I got an explosive vegetation, far wanderings. Uh, one of my favorite cards, Spontaneous Generation, Pattern of Rebirth, like, like good stuff. Uh, I, I didn't, I haven't yet <laughs> gotten like <laughs> Green Mana of this or something crazy, but, but just good usable cards that I, I feel these are for my John Irenicus deck, something crappy to donate to other people. Uh, like good staple, staple cards that, um, uh, uh, are pretty, pretty, uh, like, uh, cheap, um, even, even by today's standards, like, like commons here, these are for my wizard tribal, so, uh, yeah, these, uh, these were, like, were an okay, okay price, price points, so, so I got them, and, uh, like, whenever, whenever I, I add, like, like, let's see, uh, I got like for my wizard tribal deck. I got uh, wait one two three four five six seven eight nine 
so yeah like almost 10 percent of of the deck is uh is now old school foils and uh, i just love that <laughs> it makes me all all warm and fuzzy inside and uh yeah uh i i like to bling out my deck but like just getting foils for foil's sake even like the uh uh, modern uh, old old border foils like it's not the same like yeah like foils are so frequent and so inexpensive these days that they've lost all of their meaning these haven't like these are the originals and uh, these are even the commons are rare like if you go to magic card market and check out like how many how many uh how many tra thrashing wampuses you have on sale there like it's a it's it's a couple of dozen and uh even less like in in good condition like like all of these these are so yeah i uh, of course in seventh edition foils are are even even more rare like even the uh, commons are super rare and uh yeah like i I really like the fact that I could like add a common to my deck and it's it's a rare one. Uh, um, of course rares rares being even even more uh, uh, more like uh, more more rares being more rare of course but uh, but yeah there are so few of these on on sale that I wouldn't be like at all. Uh, surprised if 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 like we've only only seen uh, uh, like the tip of the iceberg with like when it comes to like the value of old school foils because they are just like amazingly rare. Uh, I've got a couple of friend dynamos, uh, like like good good classic cards, and uh, yeah, uh, good times. Uh, of course, I, I still have like a ton of uh, uh, different old school foils uh, on my shopping list, like the Grim Monoliths and uh, and and everything. Uh, but maybe maybe though I I'll buy those at some some point. Maybe I I won't. But yeah, these are like the the affordable ones I've I've now bought. Uh, and uh, I guess I'll go up from there. But yeah, uh, like I said, I'm I'm always looking to uh, like bling out my deck. Uh, I'm not a big fan of like collecting just to put them into a binder. I always like to put the cards into my decks, whether whether it is uh, a reserve list card or or a foil like this. Uh, so. Uh, like it just makes makes more sense. I can enjoy these. I get to see them every now and then when I draw them to my to my hand and uh, play the cards and uh, wow my my uh, my opponents with the, with some old school foils. So yeah, I love these. Um, let me know in the comment section if, if you made it to the end of this, if you enjoy uh, Magic of the Gathering, if you would like to continue see me uh, showcase my Magic of the Gathering purchases in addition to the video games. I would love to know. Um, follow Finnegan on Twitter and Instagram. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.